Hello. Uh, so I, I will be presenting uh, a, a platform and I will explain uh, the meaning that uh, should be attached to this uh, keyword platform. Uh, this is the work of the EU project. It's a, it's a large EU project and I also will explain how much effort has been going into this. Uh, and uh, this is not specifically Fiware. You may, of course, have heard of it before. It's not specifically an IoT platform, but I will explain uh, the role of uh, uh, Fiware for the IoT and uh, how Fiware can be used for uh, IoT applications. So just to remind you of the, uh, the background, uh, Fiware was an FP7 effort that started as what was called the public-private partnership. It, it was called the uh, Future Internet Public-Private Partnership. And it encompassed uh, a whole set of projects in the traditional EU sense. And uh, this slide uh, shows how many projects were involved in the whole uh, Future Internet PPP. Uh, it, it was... Uh, a prolonged effort. It went over uh, six years and it's uh, ending now, uh, in 2016. And uh, um, the whole set of projects ha has, has been involving uh, more than 600 partners. So I think you understand the, the magnitude of the effort and it's, it's not on the same scale as the, as the other EU projects you may have uh, been involved in. Uh, and the whole thing uh, rests precisely on the Fiware platform. So the Fiware platform that I will uh, present you is the basis for the whole uh, future internet uh, program, as it is now called the Fiware program. And uh, it involves uh, uh, a set of uh, components that are included in the main platform and some components that are uh, potentially added on top of the main platform. So uh, the, the main idea, uh, behind uh, the Fiware program was that the whole uh, effort should be based on uh, open specifications and on open source software. Of course, I need not, uh, this is something I, these slides are the ones we present to uh, all kinds of audiences and some audiences are not necessarily convinced uh, of the uh, uh, interest of using open source software, but here probably I need not uh, insist on this. Uh, what is important for us, because there are behind uh, uh, the whole um, Fireware program, traditional uh, software companies like Atos. Uh, engineering is the, more or less the equivalent of Atos. It's an Italian-based company. Uh, and um, telecom operators like uh, Telefonica, which is a big competitor of Orange. Uh, what is important behind this is that these companies has, have, uh, have committed to using uh, the Fireware platform and to uh, prolong the effort beyond uh, the Fireware project that, as I said before, will end uh, in this year, in 2016. So there will be a foundation, which, was, which is uh, in the course of, the, of being set up, and a non-profit foundation that will uh, continue the support of the Fireware platform beyond uh, the uh, existing uh, Fireware project. And this, uh, as you, as the, it will work more or less as the Eclipse Foundation and or, or as other uh, open source foundation that you may have heard about, like, like OW2. And um, uh, it will support uh, a community of open source developers that will work, uh, that will hopefully continue working on the development effort uh, on the basis of the existing Fireware platform. So the Fireware platform is based on a set of components that we, software components that we call uh, generic enablers. Uh, these are, as I said before, uh, open uh, specifications and they are uh, implemented in uh, what we call reference implementations. These reference implementations are provided by the contributors to the Fireware, the current EU-funded uh, Fireware project. And they are the basis of uh, what is uh, the current status of the Fireware platform. So the, the platform is divided in uh, a set of what we call chapters. 
uh, this correspond to more or less to uh, work packages in other uh, EU projects. Uh, so you, you see the, the IoT activities are only part of this, but uh, as, I, as I will show later, uh, the actual implementation of an IoT application using the Firewall platform would use more than the uh, components that are described here as IoT components. And I'm personally in charge of the IoT uh, activities within Fireware. So the, uh, the whole set of uh, components is, as I said, available uh, as uh, freely downloadable uh, open source components from uh, this site, which, which is called the Fireware Catalog. Uh, and it's classified under the uh, different uh, subsets uh, that I um, just mentioned. So these are the uh, chapters of Fireware. And I will, I, I will explain the architecture uh, later. So for the time being, what, what is important uh, uh, in practice, if you want to use the Fireware platforms, you have two, sol uh, you have, well, several solutions. Of course, you can uh, download the, uh, the software components and, and use them uh, uh, in, the, in the way you prefer, but you can also, uh, use uh, a sandbox that we call the Fireware Lab, uh, that is uh, uh, an, an existing uh, uh, supported platform uh, that is provided by the Fireware project, uh, and that, that again can be used by anyone for free. Yeah? This is this is part of the uh, EU-funded uh, Fireware program. The, the idea that we should provide this to. Uh, make it possible for an ecosystem to uh, start to develop around the, the platform. So again, these are, these are uh, freely available uh, data centers to which you may uh, connect and uh, upon which you may use uh, the uh, Fireware software. So these, uh, these data centers that provide the uh, Fireware platform in a more or less a pass mode or SAS mode um, are uh, distributed throughout uh, throughout Europe and their distribution is shown here. So there are two uh, instances of the two nodes of the Fireware Lab uh, in, in France and several other in Europe and there, there are other, uh, other nodes available uh, in uh, uh, other uh, countries around the world. Because uh, the aim of uh, the European Commission with the Fireware platform was to propose something that would potentially expand uh, beyond Europe. And we have a, a special effort, which is, which is called Fireware Mundus, to promote the use of the Fireware platform in, in countries be beyond Europe. And we are especially involved in, uh, in uh, having it uh, being used in, uh, in Africa, in South America and potentially also in, uh, in India and in China. So let me now come back to the more uh, software-oriented aspects of the platform. So as I said before, they are, there are um, uh, these uh, enablers that make up the, the platform as, as uh, its uh, building blocks, its uh, basic software components, and you can build an instance of the Fireware platform just by potentially, if you wish, downloading some of these uh, generic enablers and uh, rebuilding a subset of the platform uh, as you prefer. So this is, this is the way uh, it, it, it would work. And it, it, of course, it's a different way from using it directly from the uh, Fireware Lab, which are provided as a, as a sandbox for experiments. But it's also, of course, uh, the way it's uh, possible to use the whole thing. So the... Um, um, prominent application domain that we uh, put forward with uh, Fireware, it's one of the potential application domains, but it's probably the one for which the uh, European Commission uh, has been placing uh, the heavier emphasis, uh, is the domain of smart cities. And uh, it's, it's, I think, relatively obvious why uh, for, for smart cities it's, impor it's important to use a platform that is, uh, that is open and that is not uh, based on um, proprietary solutions and that does not uh, lock in the data of, of the city in a, in a platform that was, 
would be an exclusive mastery of a single operator. Uh, the, the idea behind this is that in, in smart city applications, there are uh, very uh, heterogeneous uh, data sources and very varied stakeholders and these stakeholders have different uh, interests and they have different constraints and uh, the uh, idea of an open and broad-based solution like fireware is uh, to to adapt to the constraints of these different stakeholders and make it possible for them to to share their data on on a platform that is uh, again uh, open and uh, based on uh, on standards and i think smart cities are very very sensitive to this and we we have i, I mean we it's not uh, it's, it's the european commission and I'm, I'm not a representative of the european commission as you may have understood uh, uh, vfiware program has uh, associated itself with an association of uh, smart cities smart cities cities that wish to be smart, maybe we should call them. Uh, and this, this is called the Open and Agile uh, Smart Cities Initiative. And this, this uh, association of cities is already, uh, well, uh, very rich with uh, uh, very um, uh, prominent uh, European cities, but also cities behind Europe, beyond Europe. And this is, uh, this is I think, very significant uh, for the uh, potential take up of uh, Fireware as a platform for uh, smart cities. Um, again, I wish to insist on the idea that when we promote uh, the use of uh, Fireware for smart cities, uh, the, the, the strong idea behind this is that uh, we wish to make it possible to share the data uh, that is for the time being being, being used in vertically integrated application. Uh, to share it in a platform that would make it possible for this data to be uh, potentially used between the different applications that, again, for the time being, are mostly uh, vertical uh, silos. And there are uh, uh, unforeseen possibilities uh, in the cross-fertilization of data between these different uh, application domains. And Smart Cities in, is the uh, the most obvious case where we have uh, these vertically integrated applications like, uh, for example, uh, smart energy, transportation, uh, the, the, the waste management networks, for example, the water distribution networks, gas distribution networks, all these uh, smart or not so smart uh, applications for, for the time being use their own infrastructure which is entirely dedicated and they do not share uh, any of their data. Uh, so the potential of a platform like Fireware uh, is to make it possible for this application to operate upon a shared platform and potentially to, uh, to share their data. So behind this, again, we come back to the uh, architecture of the Fireware platform. We have this set of uh, generic enablers, which make up the, uh, the basis of the, of the core of the Fireware platform. And on top of this, we have what we call uh, specific enablers, which are developed in one of the uh, broad vertical domains that uh, are supposed to uh, operate on top of the, of the Fireware platform. And uh, the examples that are uh, given here are again the, the smart city example, and which is itself, as I said, the aggregation of several vertical uh, uh, applications. And we have two other broad uh, domains that we wish to target with, uh, with Fireware, which, is, which are the uh, smart agri-food, smart agriculture, and uh, the, uh, well, the whole uh, food agriculture, uh, food in industry behind this. Uh, and the uh, smart industry domain, which, uh, as you understand, the, these other two domains are also extremely broad and extremely heterogeneous. So it's probably uh, it's probably uh, easier to start with. I don't, I don't mean it's, it's quite easy, but it's a more well known and more um, a more uh, already um, uh, well well managed domain, which is the domain of, of, of smart cities, and uh, the, the uh, complementary domains of uh, smart energy and smart agri-food will be addressed 
afterwards, let's say. So the, the example I give here is the domain of uh, smart energy, and this, this has been the target of, another, of, an, of one of the projects of the future internet PPP, one in, in which I was previously involved. Uh, which is the uh, FinCENI and now the fi and this, in the second phase of the, the program it was a FINAS pro project. And here is shown the architecture of uh, uh, a platform that would, would be built, I, I won't go into the detail of this architecture, a pl platform that would be built on top of the Fireware platform to provide services for uh, smart energy, including uh, smart grid services and smart metering, for which are the most uh, obvious uh, examples of uh, of uh, such the, the most let's say short-term examples of smart grid services. So now uh, I, I I wish to uh, explain in more detail what meaning should be attached to the idea of a platform when we speak of uh, of fireware as a platform. Uh, there is both uh, a technical and a non-technical uh, meaning that is uh, uh, being widely used by economists behind the idea of a platform, and it's the idea of a multi-sided platform. And you may have heard of this when uh, uh, Jean Tirol was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2014 because he was the pioneer of research in multi-sided platform. So the, the whole idea, and there are. Uh, very well-known examples of multi-sided platforms like, uh, I, I, I can start with the French-based uh, examples like Blablacar, La Fourchette, which are multi-sided platforms, but there, there are also uh, Airbnb, Uber, uh, and also, of course, the uh, smartphone operating systems that you use, like Android. And uh, these are all uh, multi-sided platforms, but they, the, which means they have different sets of users and uh, the um, aim of the platform is to make it possible for network effects to build up across uh, the different sets of users. And this should be what we aim at with uh, a broad-based platform like, like Fireware, by contrast to solutions that already exist that just make it possible to aggregate data on a much narrower basis in a limited domain, like for example, uh, uh, an existing IoT network technology like LoRa. For example, we, Orange, as you may know, are operators of LoRa networks, and uh, for these networks, we may be the operators that collect uh, the data on the basis of, uh, of uh, the use of this, these networks, but this is uh, a very narrow basis for collecting IoT, uh, IoT data. If we are just the, the, uh, the uh, well, let's say, the uh, relays uh, for transmitting uh, the data that uh, is in transit through these networks. So the aim of a, fi of a much, broad ba much broader based uh, platform like Fireware is to collect data on, on, on a much uh, wider base through different kinds of networks, which may not be uh, exclusive, may be more than IoT networks. We may, may use, of course, whatever source of data is relevant uh, and uh, collect, collect these data uh, to make them available to, to different uh, categories of users through uh, the uh, Fireware platform. So you see there are, uh, among the different categories of users, there are, of course, the providers of data, uh, which are themselves potentially aggregated through uh, different stages of intermediaries. And there are the uh, users of data, and which may not be the, the uh, direct users of platforms because they, they use applications that operate on the platform. And in this sense, the users of the platform uh, on, on, on this separate category are the uh, developers, much like for uh, platforms like uh, Android or, or uh, even over operating systems. So we, we, we have to make it possible for uh, as much data as possible to be available through the platform to attract developers and vice versa. Uh, of course, more developers will come if there is more data available to, uh, to work on. 
and there is a there is a, uh, a positive feedback loop, but which is a, again a cross-site network effect that we may wish to kickstart when we uh, use a platform like Fireware. So behind this, there is a very uh, uh, crucial idea that I want to insist on, and this is the key difference between a platform like, like Fireware and existing uh, IoT platforms that work on low-level data that is directly connected, sorry, collected uh, from devices. So the idea is that we, if we want to uh, share the data that uh, is made available through different uh, heterogeneous data sources, we have to abstract the data at a level higher than the raw uh, data that is directly collected from uh, from devices. And again, I, I, I will. Uh, uh, insist on this. This uh, is one of the main uh, specificities of the Fiverr platform. It is not a raw uh, data collection platform. It abstracts data, and I will explain uh, how this works, uh, at, at a level that corresponds to a consolidation of data from different sources above uh, the uh, level of uh, raw data uh, gathered from uh, individual data sources. And in this case, the data sources, if you, if you speak of IoT data sources, they may correspond to, they may correspond to uh, sensors. And these sensors gather data from various things uh, in the uh, literal sense, in the environment. And these, uh, uh, the, the, the data about these things is consolidated in proxies, representatives, if you prefer, uh, that are maintained in the Fireware platform that, uh, uh, again, aggregate the different uh, data sources that, uh, that uh, provide data uh, about a, a given uh, entity. So uh, I, I will try to explain things on, on this more concrete example. This is a, a smart city example. And the uh, entity, uh, the thing, that we are interested in here is not a device. And I, again, insist uh, once more on this, uh, the difference that has to be made between entities and devices. Platform, is, uh, sorry, uh, Fireware is a platform that centers on these entities, like a, a street in a city, or it may be a room uh, in a home or a building, and it consolidates data that is gathered from different sources about uh, this uh, entity. So in this case, we may uh, be using very different sources of data about uh, this street. There are very traditional uh, sensors, like there may be uh, inductive loop sensors that detect the presence or the passage of, uh, of vehicles on, 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 the, on the street. Uh, there may be uh, uh, surveillance cameras. Of course, you, you have to use some, uh, some uh, tracking software uh, on on top of the surveillance camera itself. So in, in this case, the sensor is, is the camera plus the, the, uh, the tracking software that uh, detects, in, for example, individual vehicles. Um, and you, may, you might also use crowdsourced uh, data sources like uh, the smartphones of, of individual drivers. So uh, again, you have all these uh, very uh, heterogeneous sources of data uh, which may, which don't come uh, from the same stakeholders. Uh, some may have been set up by uh, the city itself, some by private operators, and of course the, uh, the crowdsourced data come from uh, everyone. Uh, and the idea uh, of what we do in Fireware is that we consolidate data from these data, from these heterogeneous sources about uh, uh, a single entity like uh, like a street, and we make it possible for application to both uh, get data. Uh, so so I, I should call it get information because it's higher level information uh, about the state of the street, and not raw data uh, that is gathered from sensors. And you uh, you can query uh, the platform to uh, obtain uh, the uh, instant information about the state of the street, uh, whether the street is congested or not, for example. Or you may subscribe uh, to this uh, information and uh, be uh, notified if uh, the state of the street changes. Uh, and you, you do what you want. Uh, if, you, if you are an application, you, you might be a 
traffic management or uh, application or a lighting management application and you can do what you wish with this uh, kind of data. And uh, an, an interesting example, of course, is what we may uh, wish to do if we not only uh, collect data but act upon uh, uh, the, the entity that is, being, uh, that is being monitored through the platform, in this case uh, the street, and acting upon it might, might uh, correspond to closing it, opening it, or to, uh, uh, if, we manage, if, we, if we are interested in lighting management application, we might wish to turn on or off uh, the lighting. So if we are interested in, uh, in a lighting, in lighting management application, we, uh, as, as I explained before, might uh, act upon the data that is consolidated on, on the state of the street and uh, act uh, on the basis of this data to uh, turn on or off uh, the, the lighting of the street. Uh, an aspect that I will now uh, explain is that this kind of application may operate uh, remotely on the cloud, and in this case, it's a, I, I would say the traditional use of a, of a platform like uh, like Fireware. We, we call it in the, the backend uh, side of the platform, uh, or it might possibly um, operate closer uh, to the uh, sources of data, and this would be what we would do if we had to deal with uh, latency critical applications. Uh, maybe lighting is not that latency critical, but uh, there, are, there are examples for which it would be the case. And this is the, the work of uh, Laurent, who is a PhD student working uh, with us and with uh, Didier. Uh, and uh, precisely we address how we uh, can uh, optimize the consolidation of data locally uh, on a platform that is hosted again, close to the sources of data to uh, minimize the latency and to guarantee uh, deterministic return trips uh, between the sources of data and the action that you may wish to perform uh, on this data in the case of uh, latency critical uh, control oriented applications. So I will, I will go briefly on the, uh, yeah, on the uh, different kinds of sensor networks that we may uh, potentially use uh, below uh, the fireware platforms. Uh, so there, there are the, the uh, traditional, I would say, uh, network protocols. Uh, they, are, they are integrated through uh, components that are called IoT agents and that uh, individually interface with it, each of these uh, uh, IoT protocols. And the, uh, the um, case that I mentioned previously of, uh, of um, operating close to the sources of data is, uh, does correspond to what we call the IoT edge components uh, that are uh, managed separately from the uh, backend part of the, of the platform. Uh, again, uh, this is uh, more or less the same architecture shown here uh, on a different uh, a different diagram and what what you may uh, I, I won't go into detail of course is what you may understand is that there are uh, a whole set of components that you may potentially use on uh, in addition to the uh, basic uh, IOT oriented components like uh, data analysis uh, and uh, all kinds of uh, for example complex event processing that may operate uh, on the basis of the I won't go into detail about this. So I will, uh, I will finish very briefly by something that is, uh, that is dear to my heart because this is something that I've been personally been proposing uh, for the evolution of the, of the Fireware platform. And we, this, was not, uh, this was not guaranteed to, uh, to succeed uh, because my, my wish was that we go beyond the uh, present level of openness that we have with the Fireware platform, which is already uh, much, much better than what is achieved by, by existing uh, IoT platform. 
And for this, uh, the idea was to use uh, linked data, which is the uh, standard solution to make it possible for data to interoperate uh, across existing uh, data silos. Of course, FireWare is not, is not a silo, but uh, the, uh, it's already semi, a semi-open uh, infrastructure, but it's probably not as open as it should be. Uh, and uh, the idea to make it even more open and to, to be also realistic, because we, 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 we should acknowledge the fact that FireWare will not be the sole existing uh, IoT infrastructure that will not, it will not subsume uh, existing uh, infrastructures. It will, it will exist alongside uh, other potentially less open uh, IoT infrastructures. And what we should aim at is make it possible to share data between uh, platforms <coughs> like FireWare that are semi-open and platforms that are semi-closed, most of them more closed than open. Uh, and there, there are many examples of these. For example, like the, the platforms that are managed by um, device manufacturers, like Netatmo, for example. They, they have their own platform, their own cloud platform, where they gather all the data from their own devices. So it's a very narrow uh, cloud platform that uh, gathers only data from one set of devices. And of course, of course, this is, it's, it's already wonderful to be able to, 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 to have this data available, but uh, the, the, the really powerful way to uh, make this data potentially shared between uh, all applications is to make them available to the cloud of linked data, and this, this is what we have been trying to uh, propose within FireWare and to uh, achieve by uh, adopting the standards of linked data. In this case, I will not go into detail, JSON-LD, which is a serialization format for RDF, which is the uh, basic data model of linked data. And we uh, have been able to uh, push this to be adopted, as, again, as, as the standard for uh, the uh, FireWare interface. So me, you might have seen before uh, uh, an acronym, which was NGSI, which was the uh, previously uh, used uh, fireware interface, which was which was a standard, but to be frank, it was uh, a standard that was used only by by fireware, uh, so <laughs> it didn't have much, much weight as such. Uh, as, and uh, this is this is why uh, we have been uh, proposing to use instead uh, RDF and JSON LD, which are W3C standards that that have a much uh, wider potential uh, for take up and data sharing than this uh, previously used NGSI standard. So the idea behind, behind this is that we use a real, uh, I mean, uh, strict uh, REST architecture and, vast, and there is a, a perfect match between this REST, REST architecture and the use of, uh, of uh, linked data formats such as uh, JSON-LD. Uh, so this concludes my presentation. I'm sorry if I'm uh, been a bit long. Yeah.